On today's show, RIMAC teases the Concept 2 electric car, while the dual motor Model 3 may soon enter production, and just what Elon Musk will get as a pay deal if Tesla hits all its production goals. Coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host and fan of all things that make the world a cleaner, more sustainable place to live. And if it gets you from point A to point B, well, that's even better. When the BMW i3 first entered production in 2012, it not only earned a significant amount of attention for unique looks, but also the unique way it was produced, with carbon fibre reinforced plastics taking the place of steel and aluminium for body panels and structural elements. In addition to being greener to produce than steel-bodied vehicles, the lightweight materials help the i3 become one of the most efficient plug-in vehicles that you can buy. Yet this week we learned that the iX3, the planned 2020 successor to the i3 will be built with more traditional materials as part of BMW's push to roll out electric drivetrains into its mainstream offerings. Rather than continue to produce unique all-electric models, BMW's goal is to make all of its models capable of electrification, the opposite strategy to some of its competitors. So if you're a fan of that unique i3 look, you've got a few more years to grab yourself one before they become all boring. If you've been in the electric vehicle world for any length of time, you'll know about the Rimac One, the Croatian supercar concept that is not only stunningly beautiful, but blisteringly quick. It's also the car that Richard Hammond managed to crash in a recent Grand Tour episode. Anyway, I digress. It turns out that Rimac is busy working on the successor to the Concept One called, you've guessed it, the Concept 2, and based on the teaser videos released this week by Rimac, it's a great looking vehicle. There's little detail to go with the video, but it's expected this vehicle will go head to head with a next generation Tesla Roadster, and it certainly looks the part. I can't wait to get a better look at its launch. Now in its six month of production, Tesla's Model 3 sedan is gradually ramping up both production volume and deliveries, with this week seeing the first Model 3s demonstrated to potential customers on the East Coast. And as more customers get their cars, so too is Tesla following its planned expansion of the Model 3 family, working on a dual motor, higher performance model for release in the near future. And according to recent registration documents, it seems that might happen reasonably soon, with Tesla officially registering its first set of dual motor Model 3 cars for testing in California. There was also a reported sighting of an unusually badged Model 3 with larger rear brakes at a US supercharger in the last week, leading me to think that Tesla is very close to bringing those expanded, higher performance and all-wheel drive models to market. And although it's still a while before we'll see those Model 3s in New Zealand, it's nice to know that Kiwis have got a choice of rear wheel or all wheel drive, right? Some vehicles you will see in New Zealand right now, although you can't buy them, are the great vehicles being built by high school students across the country, guided by the wonderful folks at eVelocity, a charitable organization which works with local businesses in each region to advocate and educate on the benefits of sustainability. eVelocity gives students an electric motor kit and batteries, then watches as teams of young engineers build some truly amazing vehicles that race against each other at various events across the country. Despite starting in 2014 with just 16 teams, eVelocity has more than 100 teams in last year's event, and they're looking at expanding their offerings in 2018. To help, they're looking for local businesses and partners that can work with them to expand the knowledge and love of cleaner, greener electric transport. Can you help? Well, follow the link in the show notes to find out more. Next up, it's time for a quick reminder about Ecotricity's Eco Wholesale Energy products that could be saving you up to $400 a year on your home electricity bill or $4,000 on your business electricity bill. It works by linking you directly to 100% renewable wholesale prices after you pay a small admin fee. And it's the most affordable carbon zero certified electricity that Kiwis can buy. So make sure you sign up and start saving the pennies today by following the link below. As a company eager to play catch up to Tesla, Porsche is putting a lot of energy into its first luxury electric car, the Porsche Mission E. So far, we've heard about its predicted Tesla-like range and its next generation CCS quick charge system, which Porsche said will add around 400 kilometers, that's 250 miles of range in just 
20 minutes. Despite having a charging technology which will be faster than Tesla's, if perhaps not quite as widely spread at launch, Porsche says it's going to allow customers to pre-book their charging sessions ahead of time so that when they arrive on a long road trip, they won't have to spend minutes or maybe even hours queuing for a free charger. It's a nice idea, but I just hope that Porsche has a way of ensuring that people can't reserve a charging station and then not turn up, locking it out for those who really need it and are there. While Volvo passenger cars may be taking its sweet time to bring an all-electric model to market, Volvo Trucks, actually a separate company, has announced it intends to publicly start selling electric trucks in Europe next year, with the first all-electric units due to go into service with the select customers this year. Although Volvo Trucks haven't yet brought an electric truck to market, its bus division has been producing and operating electric buses in Europe for several years. So it already has the necessary experience when it comes to batteries, motors and charging infrastructure needed to make electric delivery trucks a success in Europe's major cities. When it comes to British cars of the last few decades, perhaps one of the most well-known and loved is the Jaguar XJ. This week, we learn that the next generation XJ, due to appear next year as a 2020 model year car, will be an all-electric version that leverages the iPACE's all-electric drivetrain to deliver electric goodness in a stylish form, albeit in a hatchback rather than the saloon that has become the XJ mainstay for years. And finally, armoured cars are a big business. No, I'm not talking about the one that the President of the United States rides in or the kind of thing that goes into war zones. No, I'm talking about the heavily armoured civilian cars that are designed to look just like regular cars but protect their occupants from any number of different types of assailants. Traditionally, the preserve of drug dealers and A-list celebrities, as well as the wealthy one percenters who live in dangerous cities around the world, armoured cars are usually made from large SUVs or full-size V8 sedans, but now a company from Utah is claiming a world first, a fully armoured Tesla Model S, which it claims is the fastest armoured sedan out there. I'm not sure what kind of person needs an armoured Model S, but with all that weight on board, don't expect this kind of standard Tesla performance. And if I'm honest, given the stock specs of a Tesla Model S, you should be able to escape most assailants anyway, right? And on that note, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a great weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.